Cancer, this is your week ahead astrology summary from Born Without Boundaries Astrology Motivation. My name is Michelle, guys, and thank you so much for coming and watching my videos. I am driving down and diving deep into the astrology every single week. This is going to be from March 2nd to say, no, March 3rd to March 10th. And uh, really big things are happening, Cancerians. Not just to you guys, but to everybody. The biggest thing that's happening is Saturn is this week on March 7th moving into Pisces. Now, that's big because for the past, say, six years, Saturn has been in a sign that it is the natural ruler of. So Saturn is the modern and traditional ruler of Capricorn, and it is the traditional ruler of Aquarius. And, like, just do basic flip, flip, flip through your calendar. <laughs> like, you can see that Capricorn, Aquarius. Aquarius comes after Capricorn. Um, Saturn spent three years. Saturn spends about three years in each sign. So it spent three years in Capricorn. It spent three years in Aquarius. So for the past six freaking years, it has been in a sign that it is a natural ruler of. Well, that's about to change. It is going to drop into Pisces. And Saturn isn't, is not comfortable in Pisces. No, 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 no. It's very different. But I like Saturn in Pisces. You want to know why? Because being someplace we're uncomfortable makes us the best version of ourselves. And Saturn in Pisces, I think, is really the best version of itself because it can't be so strict. It, how do you apply rules and laws and, 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 and boundaries to a place that doesn't even talk within that talk within that talk that Pisces is, is got nothing to do with those things and so Saturn has to be really really building in different ways and from totally different place and that is from the place of the imagination which means get ready for something new Saturn hasn't been in Pisces for almost 30 years which means that really it was way, way back in the early 90s that new things stopped being created. Started be, that, that new things stopped being created. Since then, I would say even earlier, we took a hit. I would say maybe even in the early 70s, we took a hit where new things just didn't want to be created. Everybody wanted to keep recreating the same old crap because they had the process and the mechanisms and the marketing and the sales pitch all worked out. And that's all those things Saturn controls. Well, here we now have a time to expand and grow and actually have to have the balls to not so much create boundaries, but amalgamate. We have to actually bring the imagination to life. And I think Saturn has to do its best work in Pisces. It has to know, it, know itself the best, but also question itself so that it can grow and expand. And I think we have three years where that's all it's going to get a chance to do. So this is a major, major mindset change. Like I said, we haven't seen this kind of thing for maybe 28 years, 30 years. Um, and because Saturn has been stuck in its own kind of, oh, look, it's my castle in Aquarius. It's my castle in Capricorn. Ain't your, ain't your castle in Pisces, Saturn. Mm, better get your swimmies on because you sink. And that's kind of what it is. It's kind of like he has to open up and listen or else he'll fail miserably. If he tries to apply the same methodologies he uses in Capricorn and in Aquarius with the crowd and with people, there's no way he's going to get shit done in Pisces, right? There's no way. So creativity will come back into the world and we'll actually start taking our dreams seriously. We'll actually start taking um, un, un, things that haven't been done yet seriously. Remember, Pisces is not just the, the ruler of musicians and artists. Einstein was a Pisces. You're talking about the most ingenuitive of ingenuitive energies is Pisces. It's also experienced. It marks the end of a cycle. It means that Saturn has now, by the end of the next three years in Pisces, will complete its journey through the Zodiac, which is a maturation cycle. A natural cycle of how far 
do I have to go to grow up? Right? So it's a big change for all of us. Now, how does this change impact you directly, Cancerians? Well, Saturn is going to be, as of March 7th, <clears throat> and through actually the next couple of months, Saturn is going, actually the next year, Saturn is going to be in Pisces 1. So in the, in the first 10 degrees of Pisces. The first 10 degrees of Pisces are trying to the first 10 degrees of Cancer. Now, initially, you could argue that when Saturn is at zero to one degrees, actually zero to about four degrees Pisces, it will be square to those of you who are Cancer threes, born at the very end of Cancer season, so like Leo Cuspers. And that means that there's a lot of challenges and struggles with getting things done. Doesn't mean you won't get things done, and all of a sudden you'll have to pay attention to it a little bit harder, right? So understand that Pisces, I mean, Cancer threes, but Cancer ones, those of you born in June, Cancer ones, this is, this is harmonious energy for you. This is about tranquility when it comes to being able to actually manifest what you've been working so hard on. It's like now having the authorities and the rules on your side or having things open up and not be so strict so that you can get more things done. Isn't that gonna be a beautiful feeling? Yay, celebrate, because it's gonna be with you guys. It's gonna be with you guys all year long. For those of you who are Cancer threes, born at the end of it, born at the end of Cancer, Saturn will not be square to you for the next year. Because I think once Saturn moves past about, like I said, three or four degrees, if the square really breaks up. It really does. So, so you don't have to worry about it for the next year, but the next few months you do. Be prepared for there to be a little bit more, like to, for, for those changes and, and ambiguity or even, you know, authority figures are not being able to make up or decide or figure out strategies or understand the rules or regulations or just the rules and regulations constantly changing could hold things up for you and stall things for a while. May not have anything to do with you it could just but it could just affect you um cancer twos um another oh sorry let's go back another major transit that's happening this week is uh mercury is dropping into pisces as well mercury drops into pisces on march 2nd so that's oh it's already in pisces okay uh, i forget what i'm talking to you guys so it dropped in on thursday so yesterday now that means that Mercury is conjunct to Cancer once, and it will be through the weekend. By the time Saturn drops in, Mercury will have moved on to Cancer twos. So midweek to end week, Mercury is gonna be conjunct to you guys, Cancer twos. Those are the Cancers that are born sometime between like the first or second to like say the 10th. So for you guys, your natal sun will be trying to Mercury. That means cleverness. That means being able to communicate really effectively. That means having your brain like like on on like on point. That means um, being able to have nice conversations with people or find people that understand or speak the way that you speak. And Mercury and Pisces is intuitive energy, so it's almost like you don't have to use many words. You you people you get people people will get you. People will understand you without you having to be uncomfortable or write it on the dotted line. So it's going to be very, very nice energy for you. Now, Cancer twos, you also have the special, <laughs> I say this with sarcasm, the special benefit of having a square to Jupiter, uh, to Jupiter conjunct Chiron. Jupiter and Chiron and Venus at the beginning of this week right now are all conjunct to each other in Aries. And that is absolutely square to those of you with birthdays in the dead center of cancer season. So understand that that means you're going to, this is a chance for growth. This is a chance for great, great abundance coming into your life. But it is going to bust your balls until it happens. Like it's going to, it's going to make it rough for you because Chiron's here. I mean, just the square in and of itself is going to make things a little rough. But the fact that Chiron is in that conjunction, Cancer twos, you're talking about huge money because Venus rules finances, huge financial breakthroughs, huge romantic breakthroughs. 
But oh my God, if you don't have, you're not going to almost scratch your eyes out before it happens because it's going to be difficult. Because because Chiron makes it difficult and that square makes it extra difficult. It's it's going to, it's you know, you're going to, it's like you're going to finally hold your winning lottery ticket and like n not even cash it in for the first week because you're just going to have to sleep the whole time. Because you're going to be so exhausted after you, you put through all the challenges and all the obstacle courses that... Chiron square your natal sun is going to put you through okay it just is it's like am I good enough do I have it in me have I done enough have I worked hard enough you know all of those things right I can't like but oh my god the abundance that's coming out on the other side so understand that that's an energy that's impacting you a great deal it's been impacting you Jupiter con uh, conjunct Chiron is going to is going to impact you to the end of almost to the end of April but the fact that Venus is there, adding on that little extra boop, is, and, and it's almost like she's specifying where all this growth and development is going to happen. And you will feel it on your romantic relationships, how you are valued, what you value, how much value people think you have, how much money you make, all of those things that Venus rules. And it can, since she's such a close planet, it could be really, you really take it personally. So if you've been going through the ringer, you know why. But at least now, you guys, at least now, um, you know, by, I would say by midweek, you're going to have Mercury to help you out. You're going to have that trine to maybe help you, oh, finally realize something, finally figure something out, or communications to actually make sense to you. Now, for those of you with... Um, Cancer 3 is so born at the very end of Cancer season. Like I said, for you guys... There will be a square. There's a there was probably a square to Mercury on March second on, on Thursday when it dropped in um, to your natal suns, which means that if communication you had your own little like mini um, Mercury retrograde, that's kind of what it is. It kind of like Mercury squared your natal sun, and all of a sudden just communications got rough. But Mercury moves quick. It's not going to last that long. But Saturn is going to be with you guys for a while, and it's going to bust your balls. It's going to make things rough. It's going to make things difficult. It's not as tough as Chiron because Chiron doubles down. It's almost like laser surgery pain. But Saturn just kind of makes it more, more general and it works through the establishment. Like Chiron works through your own personal, your own personal buttons. It pushes your own personal buttons. But um, Saturn works through the establishment, the established laws, rules, and regulations. So expect your balls to be busted for the next couple of months. Just letting you know. Um, now, I think I've, I think we've gone over everything like specifically. So if you want to know, Cancer ones, you're doing the best this week. You really are because you don't have that square to Chiron. You don't have that square, you, you, but you do have the trine to Saturn when it drops in, the trine to Mercury when it drops in. I mean, honestly, if I had to pick which Cancer I was, I would definitely be a Cancer 1 this week. <laughs> it would, it's just the nicest. Um, but I'm a Cancer 2. So I've, I've got that square. Believe me, I have felt that square to my natal sun. Because it's my natal sun is conjunct my natal Jupiter as well. So it's been Jupiter, square, Jupiter. Jupiter conjunct Chiron square my Jupiter and Sun. It's just been, it's. I know I'm growing, but oh my God, if if God ain't busting my balls in every way, you know what I'm saying? And that's just kind of how it kind of feels. And this is why I got sick last week. Like it's just been putting me through the ringer. I've been getting a lot of stomach problems because there's been so much tension, and it's just like every single day I'm like, no, don't give up, don't give up. And sometimes I can't even find a reason why. It's like because if I stop here, it'll make it all not worth it. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that that's kind of what Cancer 2s are feeling right now. Um, one thing I didn't mention is that the sun is also in Pisces, right? And it, it is also Cancer 2s. It's going to be it's going to be trying the sun of Cancer 2s. Sun trying the sun is knowing who you are and really feeling good about yourself and a time to shine and a sense of ease with your life purpose and with your courage. You find it very easy to be courageous and confident. So listen, cancer, cancer, cancer twos, you do have the sun helping you out. So that's a little bit, that's a, that's a little bit happy. That's a little bit happy. 
Um, but Cancer Ones, I think you <laughs> I think you got the best of the situation. I'm just going to say that. The moon this week, we have something very special this week. It's a full moon. We always love those full moons, right? It's a full moon in Virgo. And a full moon in Virgo is actually going to be, I think it's, I think it's at 17 degrees Virgo. So it's Cancer Twos. Once again, it's gonna be, it's gonna be sextile to you guys. Getting it done. Yeah, sextile means there's opportunities that will open up for you. Now, what does the Virgo full moon mean? It means healing. But what it does, it means clear, it means detoxing. That's what it means. Now, if you look on the zodiac wheel, um, you'll see Pisces on one end and Virgo on the other. Virgo is about what you have to do to heal yourself physically, to heal your body, to heal your environment, but really the environment, like plants and everything around you, as well as your home. Heal it, keep it up, keep it healthy. Pisces is about what you need to do to heal and cleanse your soul so you stay open and receptive to God in faith. But they're both very healing energies. They could also be both very toxic, but they're both very healing energies. So the Virgo full moon asks us, what do you need to get out of your system? Like, what do you need to detox? That includes everything from stress to too much candy to drugs and alcohol, right? To too much work, right? To clean out your house. This is a great time to take that junk that you've been hoarding and get it out give it away be altruistic you know combine altruism with this full moon and then clean the house this is like spring cleaning time the virgo full moon is perfect for or perfect for spring cleaning to just detox your home to detox um your environment your garden clean it up and clean yourself out right a lot of people say oh bikini season gotta get ready it's not about bikini season it's about actual health you know, this isn't about the way you look. This is really about the way you feel and how healthy is your atmospheres, your physical atmosphere, your social atmosphere. And this is this is like the full moon says detox, purge the stuff that's getting in the way of that. And that is going to be sextile to you, your natal, your natal sun's cancer, cancer twos. So that's another benefit that you get to have, right? You get the you get the sun sextile to, and no, I'm sorry, you get the sun uh, trying to you, and you get this full moon sextile to you. So that's not so bad. I think that's I think that's not so shabby. That's not so shabby. I like that. And I like it for you. This is like really getting settled with yourself, and I think some really nice news is probably going to come in too. So you let me know in the comments below. I'm going to ask you a question. You ready? Do you know the ruler of your decant? That's right, because even though the moon rules all of cancer, there is a ruler or a sub-ruler for each decant. So you tell me if you know what the ruler for your decant is. You can Google it, it's really easy. Um, and leave it below in the comments. I would love to know and I will see you guys here next week. Um, announcement, yes, I will be doing lives here. Again, they're not going to be called Daily Tarot because it's an astrology channel. So I'm focusing, it's going to be like daily astrology or a daily check-in. But I really, really missed you guys over the past couple of days and so I want to get back to it. I have memberships now here. That's right. For a membership fee every single month, you, during these live tarots, these live, these live sessions with me, will be able to ask your personal questions. That was never allowed before. I never took personal questions before. And I won't take personal questions from everyone. I will only take personal questions from members and I will do readings and pick cards for you. And I will answer natal chart questions for you. Absolutely, online. And I go line almost every day I'll be on here. So that's, that's a pretty good deal. Um, you'll also get benefits such as discounts, right? An extra discount on my live event. And I have a whole merchandise line that I'm about to unveil. So you'll be getting, you'll be getting discount codes for that too. Same as BWOB over on Born Without Boundaries Tarot and uh, Harmony over on Born Without Boundaries Tarot. Those memberships are actually a little cheaper because I don't go live much over there. I go live almost every day over here. So that's a lot of access to me. You hear what I'm saying? Um, I love you guys. I hope you consider the memberships and I will see you in the readings. Bye guys.